Thank you, everyone. As Derek said, um, I'm Alvin. I go by they, them, theirs pronouns, and uh, I am a worker owner with Chai Commons. Before we were a worker-owned cooperative, we started right here back in 2018. Uh, so it's going on about four years now since we became a breakout group. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about where we are now as a breakout group. Um, and then prior to that, we're going to just talk a little bit about what got us together, how everything started, and then, you know, where, where we're going to be headed in the upcoming months and years. So this slide just presents like a timeline for how the group as a whole came together, but also some of the events that occurred that uh, we were either present at or took part in or were galvanized by to do the work that Shy Commons does. So uh, for example, uh, we were part of the uh, group that was summoned through a Smart Chicago uh, Collaborative to do the uh, Connect Chicago internet study. Uh, a couple of my other co-owners, uh, uh, Steve Ediger and uh, Nero Yusuf Zai was in on that cohort of people. Um, and then Steve also had another project uh, where he took data that was uh, curated by this organization called Shareable. And he actually started another hack uh, uh, breakout group here at, uh, at Shy Hack Night. And uh, they were able to curate some of that data, which led to what we have as one of our internal or uh, community projects, our, our map. And then uh, we'll just talk a little bit about one more event that was uh, a catalyst for us starting. And that was an event that was uh, co-sponsored uh, by Chi Hack Night, uh, Chicago Sustainability Leaders Network, and uh, a uh, church in South Shore. And this particular event, we had a uh, Chi Hack Night goes to the community event. So Shy Hack Night was actually all of us who were here at the time. Most of us went to that event in a church in South Shore. And so that particular event led to us forming the basis for what our second internal project became, which is known as Block Share. And then uh, after we all got together, started doing d things together in different uh, you know, activities, activity groups, we were like, hey, we know we're pretty good as far as, uh, you know, community organizing or doing uh, this type of work that is community focused. But there are a lot of marketable skills that we have that, you know, we could actually form the basis of what could be a consultancy. And so that's what led us to getting together a group of worker owners and consumer owners uh, to form what is known as Shy Commons uh, Cooperative. So the cooperative came after uh, we formed the uh, breakout group. And now we've been registered with the state uh, as a limited worker cooperative association. So let's talk a little bit about our first uh, community project, our Shy Commons directory map. So uh, the map, as I said, started out with data that was uh, curated by Shareable. That data was an extension of what became a breakout group here at, at Shy Hack Night. And we continue to maintain that data. Uh, we are now up to over 800 entities on our map. And uh, what we did was uh, in 2016, we had the... Uh, sharing cities map mapathon uh in a chn breakout group and then the next iteration of the map was our 3.0 version which which came out a couple of years or actually more like four years later uh around 2020 uh with the version number 3.0 and that particular version uh 
is one that is able to be interactive. So before the map was only what we were able to do on the back end, but once the version 3.0 came out, people who actually had a presence on the map can now go in and uh, with our, you know, guidance and assistance, they can now be able to uh, make uh, suggestions as to changes that needs to be made for their particular data to be made more current than what we have it. So it's now uh, basically a living document, if you will, as opposed to a static map just, you know, there on, uh, on the web page. Our next version will be the version 4.0. Uh, this will incorporate some of the mapping efforts that are going around, going on around the world uh, by various entities that we are currently forming relationships with. So when the next map comes out, that body of people who are able to uh, make contributions, make suggestions and make improvements on the map will be global. So we'll, be, we'll go from a regional or uh, local uh, mapping instance into something that you know, can be seen and uh, you know, uh, participated in by people all over the world. So this is our block share uh, community project. So as I said, when we started out, we had our two projects that we dealt with uh, here as a breakout group in Chai Commons. So Blockshare is an instance of building a community owned, operated, and uh, functional Wi-Fi utility. So basically each community in, in Chicago or anywhere else has the opportunity to build its own uh, internet instance from the ground up using block share tools, norms, and uh, expertise from us or from people who are already in the community with the uh, skills and the uh, acumen to be able to, you know, partake in any of the uh, skill sets that it requires to have block share. So um, block share has, for one, a, a GIS mapping instance where uh, we have taken the instance of a local church in South Shore that has a Wi-Fi transceiver on the rooftop. And we were able to check and verify where the signal strength actually uh, is able to extend to. And on the GIS mapping instance, we're able to provide a heat map of where that signal spread is uh, being able to uh, be, you know, uh, received. So uh, this particular map that you see here gives us a graphical instance of where that is. So precisely where we are here is uh, in South Shore along Exchange Avenue. And uh, the, the two darker structures that you see on the map are where we have the actual transceiver and the repeater and uh, antenna for the transceiver. And those two uh, uh, signal uh, devices work in concert to broadcast a, uh, a Wi-Fi uh, you know, uh, instance where people who are in that area of those circles, those, cons uh, semi those two circles, are able to uh, get on the uh, internet using the... Uh, those two uh, antenna instances. What we've also done with Blockshare is that we were able to build a use case for people in the neighborhood uh, to say, how is your internet quality? What do you need to have to make it uh, uh, more uh, you know, uh, reliable, more affordable, and also local? So uh, we were building these use cases for uh, saying, let's take this out to the community, let's take this out to stakeholders, let's take this out to people who are decision makers to say, these are the people who live here, these are the problems they're having, this is the solution that Blockshare could possibly provide as a means to alleviate what those problems are. 
And then, uh, of course, uh, this particular exercise will be done with people in the community. So we're not trying to go into a community and say, uh, we think we know what your problems are. We're trying to go into a community and say, what are the problems that you're experiencing? How can this instance of technology be used to uh, bridge the gap that you, that you have or to eliminate the obstacle that you have using block share as a technological solution? The next thing that we've been able to do uh, as part of our collaboration with Shy Hack Night is uh, we participated in the Citywide Digital Equity Council guiding team. So that particular team was assembled by the mayor's office to do community conversations around uh, three aspects. One was uh, what are the uh, shortfalls that communities who are under resource as far as internet cap, uh, capacity goes, uh, are they having? What are those uh, gaps that are causing them to, you know, fall behind uh, when it comes to internet access? Or what are those uh, barriers that are there which already exist that are not allowing them to have, you know, full access to you know, internet capacity? Uh, and then the second part of this was uh, the asset mapping. So what are those solutions that those communities may have or are trying to acquire that could solve the problem? And then the third aspect of it was the actual solutions finding. So the solutions finding workshops was you bringing those community members together with people who are in the industry or have uh, some level of technical or technological expertise uh, that is longstanding, but are community-based. So bringing those people together back into the communities and saying, these are your uh, uh, solution finders. These are the people who we could uh, partner with. Yeah. Or these are the people in your neighborhood that have a instance of a solution. So let's all uh, form a uh, coalition, if you will, to try to address the problem. We actually just got done con uh, concluding with the last aspect of the uh, Digital Equity Council uh, last week. Another partnership that we were able to form was uh, with a company called the Chicago Area Broadband Initiative, or CABI. CABI is a nonprofit um, that has three different aspects to their uh, programming. They actually are trying to put internet free internet into communities that are underserved. Uh, we're trying to form a partnership with them because they actually have access to the uh, fiber optic uh, backbone or backhaul that the internet really is most reliable having. So a wireless signal is, is great, but if you have the signal that's coming from fiber optic cabling, that's the most reliable one to have. So we are in a partnership uh, conversation with Cabby, uh, thanks to our connection here with uh, Shy Hack Night. Also, we are in a budding uh, partnership with uh, the University of Chicago's uh, Internet Access and Equity Initiative. And this is a group that's actually done some studies all over the city. Uh, as to what the shortfalls are uh, from one community to the next uh, for internet uh, signal reliability. So they've actually done uh, these studies where you, you put a device on your particular uh, uh, modem that tracks the reliability of your signal. And South Shore is one of those communities, uh, communities like Avondale and uh, I believe Lincoln Park is also involved with this. So they are taking instances from affluent communities and co comparing those with instances that are in underserved communities to see what the you know, uh, basic uh, shortfalls are as it pertains to internet reliability. Um, lastly, we have been able to attract over the last, particularly over, over the last couple of years, even with the pandemic, a very diverse group of 
highly skilled people right here at our, in our breakout sessions. So we've been able to meet some really uh, strong, technologically sound uh, minds working here with, uh, with Shy Hack Night in our breakout sessions. And some of those folks have even gone on to help us with our uh, instances of forming all of the different uh, projects that we uh, just talked about, like our GIS map or our personas. And then we're also going to uh, expand this particular volunteer core to bring in new uh, people with new ideas to continue to grow both of our uh, community projects. Our call to action, if you will. So we know that, uh, you know, as far as our map is concerned, we have a lot of skills that, uh, you know, we, we are able to employ. Um, if you look at the bottom there, we are currently using uh, Python, React, Geo Geographic Information Systems uh, tools, and uh, also user interface design and social science survey design analyses expertise. So those are the different types of uh, skill sets that we currently are in need of, but are also uh, having to uh, employ. Our next one is our block share. Block share continues to evolve as a project. Uh, what we're looking at now is uh, what does a community partnership with block share looks like from a non-technical uh, aspect. So uh, we'll, we will probably be needing volunteers that are people who are more within the social sciences uh, uh, arena along with people who have uh, the technical skill sets, whether it be in building the hardware infrastructure or building the software uh, uh, back end for our server that will be placed in any local community. All of these community instances will have their own server that they can use to uh, communicate with, with one another and also share all of their tools, rides, and uh, skills within the community. So um, as far as our call to action is concerned, for our volunteers, that's what we're looking for. But we also have another call to action. We are a fully fledged consultancy and we're looking for uh, worker owners to join us. We're looking for people with uh, a variety of skill sets that uh, we will basically find job opportunities for. And uh, our worker ownership uh, core is right now uh, in great need of some diversity. So we're particularly looking for uh, women and minority groups, black and brown folks. So uh, if you're interested in doing any of this type of work, uh, please come visit us or you can go on to our shycommons.coop website where we have a join us page and there you'll be able to find a uh, instance for a skill survey that uh, you know you can fill out and we look forward to meeting you if you're interested in finding out more about what we do or interested in uh, contributing to our uh, consultancy projects. Um, that concludes uh, my uh, presentation. I will take questions at this time. Uh, my question is regarding, generally or usually when you work with communities um, and it's a new time or something different and you're trying to really help people, there are also a lot of creative and unique ideas that come out of that. I'm wondering if you can speak about some of those experiences and also how uh, those experiences uh, are protected. You know, how the people actually benefit from their real ideas, from their own ideas, and maybe not exploit it or become someone else's ideal. That kind of autonomy, and also being able to communicate with people uh, that they feel comfortable with and uh, growing. Thank you. Um, first, I'll take the first part of your question and say, that uh, 
you're right. There is a wealth of talent, especially in our underserved communities. And we've, we've met people who are actually trying to do mesh networks in, in different communities around the city. We know of two instances where we've talked to people that are trying to do some of this work. And um, that's the type of talent that we want to partner with. And the second part of your question, um, I can say three words that we truly believe in that I think will answer that question. And those words are, they own it. Shy Commons doesn't own anything. When it comes to us going to a community, we want to be able to share what they have, not, you know, co-opt what they have. We want to be able to share this, their skills. We want to be able to uh, co-build, if you will, uh, any type of, uh, you know, uh, tools that they have, using those tools to co-build something tangible that will be beneficial in, in that particular community. Super quick question. Can you describe the difference? What's a consumer owner versus a, uh, I think you said builder owner? So we have four ownership classes. The, the two that uh, we currently are, uh, you know, have on our roster, on our roles are our worker owners. Those are the people who, as we like to say internally, do the work that keeps the lights on and the doors open. And then you have the consumer owners. Those are the people who uh, want to learn about cooperativism. They want to uh, be able to find out what the experience of a cooperative lifestyle looks like. And eventually we'll be able to benefit from some of our offerings that we have as far as our internal projects, our community projects, or our uh, consultancy. All right. Thank you so much, Alvin.